I truly want to make this the absolute last product research video that you'll ever need to watch. Look, you can't sell a badly chosen product even if you've created the absolute best ad in the world with the best looking website. However, you can definitely sell a well chosen product even with a not so great ad and not so great looking website. The point that I'm trying to make is that the product truly is everything and that's why you'll see some random 16 year olds online who seem to quickly take off with their dropshipping stores and buy Lamborghinis and others who try product after product with absolutely nothing to show for it. The ones who are seeing success simply just understand product research a lot better than you do. Because if you can pick the right product, you can basically do everything else wrong and still see some sort of success. Now, I've personally found and sold dozens of winning products and spent the last few days analyzing exactly why these products worked and I found a significant common pattern. And so in this video, I'm going to break down the ultimate winning product checklist that all of my past winning products had. Then we're going to do product research together and show you how to find and analyze winning products versus bad products. But before we get into that though, if you haven't already joined my free course, I highly recommend you do so. It's not your average basic free course. It's truly one of a kind with over 25 hours of step-by-step -step content. And I just wish I had something like that when I first started. So if you want to take advantage of that, you can sign up for free with the link in the description below. All right, so now let's start with the absolute most important thing. What is a winning product? Number one, it has the potential to make someone truly feel some sort of emotion when they see your product. Like it's something that they can immediately connect to or see improving their life. The best way to explain this is through an example. So let's look at these two products. They're very similar products. They both do the exact same thing. However, you'll notice that one allows you to customize the product with your own cat's names and breed. And so if you're a cat owner and see something like this, you would immediately feel a connection to the product and would want one for yourself to also represent your own cats. And this brings me perfectly into number two, which is does this product fit into a passionate niche. The more niche your product is, the better you'll be able to speak to the people within that niche and build a connection. If we look at the doormat example again, it'll be a lot easier to sell the customized version with the cats because we can target and speak to a very passionate audience within the cat niche. These people are going to absolutely love this product. On the other hand, trying to sell the generic version is going to be incredibly difficult because Number one, no one is necessarily passionate about a doormat. And number two, a non-custom version can be easily found on Amazon. Number three, does this product solve a genuine problem? Does it save someone time or frustration? Does it remove a specific pain from someone's life? Look, the personalized cat doormat doesn't necessarily solve a problem and not every product needs to solve a problem, but that doormat still makes thousands of dollars because of how relatable it is to people. And so if you're not selling that type of product, then you better choose a product that solves a problem, something that will make the person feel the genuine need to purchase your product to remove the pain they're currently facing in their life. Again, this is best explained with an example. So let's look at this product, which I'm sure many of you are actually familiar with. This portable blender went viral many times over the last few years, with a few stores turning this once dropshipping product into a full-on brand. However, why did this go extremely viral? Well, it solved a few major problems. Number one was being able to create a smoothie on the go without having to connect to a wall plug, which saves people time and is very convenient. And number two, it helped people save money by not having to purchase expensive shakes on the go. The more problems your product can solve, the better, as this gives us more marketing angles to pursue. Number four, Many people don't really think about this, but can you or another creator quickly and efficiently film videos of the product and explain what it does in under five seconds? This is important because you don't want to choose products that are extremely difficult to make content around for you. So for example, if you choose a baby product and don't have a baby to shoot content with for ads, it's going to be pretty difficult to do anything. So these are things you want to be thinking about while doing your product research. You also want to make sure that your product is quick and easy to understand. If we look at the portable blender example again, within basically the first one to two seconds, we already know what the product is, what it does, and the main benefit. 
This is going to drive impulse purchases, which is what we're after. Because we're not like these huge brands with unlimited marketing dollars and have the time or money to educate people on what our product does. We want it to be super clear exactly what our product does within the first few seconds. All right, so now let's jump into my computer where I'm going to do live product research with you guys using one of my favorite platforms. All right, so now we're in my computer and we're going to be using one of my absolute favorite product research platforms, and that is Minea. All right, so if after watching this part of the video, you feel like you want to try Minea for yourself, especially after you see just how powerful this tool truly is, then you can use the link in the description below to get 20% off a month for the first three months and save yourself a little bit of money. All right, so now once you actually sign up to Minea, this will be the dashboard that you actually come into. And you'll see that right here, we are browsing ads, okay? So we can browse ads on Facebook, we can browse ads on Pinterest, and we can browse ads on TikTok. Now, I personally still like to browse ads on Facebook. I still think it's one of the absolute best um, advertising channels out there, but we can also do it for Pinterest and for TikTok as well. And everything I'm gonna show you today, you can apply to Pinterest and TikTok as well. But for the case of this video, I'm actually just going to stick with Facebook. So essentially what Mene has done is it's basically combined all of the running ads right now on Facebook. So that in itself is pretty cool, but what we can do is we can take this a step further, okay? And what we can do is we can use powerful, powerful filters to narrow down all of these ads, right? Because there's like hundreds of thousands, if not millions of ads being ran on Facebook, right? And what we want to do is we want to filter down to the ones that are running right now that are potential winning products for us to actually sell. So now Minea have their own set of filters over here, which is weekly winners, best of the month, season cash machine, recent drop shipping, and Q4 winners of 2022, but I believe this should be uh, 2023. Um, so now what we can do, for example, is we can just click on weekly winners, right? And now we can see what's been working over the last week, okay? And now we'll see some really great ads that have been performing very well over this last week, okay? So if we see here right away, this one, for example, catches my attention because I see a baby crying and then it says the power of warmies, okay? So now if I open this, what we can do is we can open this in another tab where we can get a ton more information about the ad, about the product, and see if it's a product that fits within the criteria that I was talking about earlier. All right, so now what we can do is we can actually click over here and actually watch the video to see what the product does, okay? So it says the power of warmies, you know, we essentially see a crying baby, and then we see essentially a doll of some sort, being giving, it's warm, it's lavender scented, and then the baby stops crying. So this is like the absolute perfect example that I could give for a potential winning product because it essentially checks off everything that we were speaking about earlier. So number one, you can definitely feel something as soon as you watch this video and see the product. You can definitely feel this emotion, especially like if you're a parent, and you see a baby crying, you're going to feel this like emotion within you that like, oh my God, this baby's crying. And then the fact that once you give them the product, they stop crying, you immediately see that this product is solving a huge problem, which is a crying baby. Um, unfortunately, babies do cry a lot, but you can see that this was explained perfectly. Like this is the most perfect ad that you can put together for this kind of product because it's 15 seconds, no one's really talking, it's just a crying baby, you know, and that's, you know, the product is doing all of the advertising for us, okay? So you give the product to the baby, it's warm, you know, they just add, you know, some main benefits, it's lavender scented, and then as you can see, the baby stops crying. So if you're a parent and you see this, and you're like, oh my God, I have a baby that cries all the time, you know, this is going to be, you know, the solution to my crying baby all the time. I can just put this little doll on them and they'll just stop crying. So this is extremely, extremely powerful. So now that we've seen that, what we could also look at is the ad copy. So over here we can see that their ad copy isn't you know, too great, it's essentially just one line. But what we can also do is see the actual Facebook ad post. So I'm gonna open that in a different tab. And now we can actually see the exact Facebook ad that they've been running. So now what we can see is that this product or this ad has over 188,000 likes it has 30,000 comments and 71,000 shares. That's absolutely unreal. Like this product is definitely a winning product and has done extremely well. Now, the reason why I actually like to come to the ad is not necessarily for that. I like to look at the comments and what I like to do is go to most relevant and then click on newest because 
I wanna see if this ad is still generating interest and still generating comments. If it's still generating comments like today and the last few days and every few minutes or every few hours it's generating comments, then I know that people are still interested in this product and are still, you know, want to buy this product because people only comment on things that, you know, they actually are really, really interested in. A lot of people, you know, don't really comment on anything. So we can see here 50 minutes ago, an hour ago, an hour ago, two hours ago, two hours ago, 15 hours ago, 16 hours ago, 16. So this product is still generating a ton of engagement, okay? So this is essentially the best confirmation you could have for a product because now it's like, I'm not really guessing anymore if this product is a winner or not, or if this product is worth at least a shot at testing. I'm getting real information from real potential customers on Facebook that are, you know, tagging other people, commenting, engaging with the ad. This is the best confirmation I could get before I actually start testing a product. So I absolutely love this feature over here that says see an ad post, okay? And now what else we can see over here is the, you know, the information about the ad. So we can see that it's running. This is the shop name. It's been running for 30 seven months, that's over three years. If an ad is running for three years or if a product has been running for three years, you can best believe it's a winning product that's been proven to work over and over and over again. So now what we can do is, I usually like to go to the product page of the ad or you know of the competitor as well, just to see exactly what they're doing and what their website actually looks like. And I love that this is a feature that Menea gives as well because it makes it really easy to see our competitor's website. So now once we come to the website, this is essentially what you're going to be competing against, okay? So if you choose to go against or you know essentially to sell this type of product we're going to need to create a similar website or better and this is already a great looking website with great photos um, and all of that and you know this is where some people might get overwhelmed and be like oh my god i have to start with like all of these different you know animals and you know that's not the case you can just look at the reviews over here and see which ones have the absolute most reviews and just start with those right you don't need to start with you know every possible you know animal and actually what i recommend is just starting with a few when you give people so many choices like this they actually you know don't even know which one to choose because they just have so many options to choose from but when you give people just like three or five choices then they'll be able to make a choice a lot quicker and then if we scroll down over here we can actually scroll through the engagement and see how it's been increasing you know over over the months, which is really cool. And as you can see, it's been increasing quite a bit, um, which is really, really cool. What we can also see is the audience country. So this product right now, this ad is only being targeted to the US. So this is powerful information because now we can be like, okay, you know, they've obviously scaled this in the US, but what if we take this to Europe? What if we take this to Canada, to Australia? These are untapped markets that I'm sure would benefit from this product as well. Uh, we can also see the audience age that is most likely to buy this. And as we can see, 60 to 100 year olds, you know, are the most, I mean, I mean I'm not sure if 100 year olds are buying this. And the reason why I think that is, is because grandmas and grandpas are most likely buying this for their grandkids, right? And that just makes a lot of sense. So that's super, super powerful. Now, another thing we can do right here in Minea is actually push this product directly into our Shopify store, okay? So we can just click on generate for Shopify, and then we can select the language that we want to use in our Shopify store, which is like, you know, just amazing because, you know, let's say we're selling on a French store, right? You know, we can just click on French and it'll automatically translate, in, you know, everything into French. So I'll just click on English and then you can essentially go through the title that you want to use or you could add a custom title. They essentially use AI to come up with creative titles. And then same thing with the product descriptions, it'll essentially write out a product description for you. you and then you can choose images as well. And then you can save and actually just link your store and push it directly into your Shopify store, which is really, really cool. All right, so now coming back into Minea into the ad section, that's what you could do with the weekly winners tab, okay? And what, you know, again, you could also do this with the best of the month. So if you click on best of the month, this will look at over the last month, you know, some of the best ads. Um, as well. All right, but what I personally like to do instead of using these preset filters over here is actually set up my own custom filters on the left hand side over here. And the reason why I like to do that is because, you know, anyone that's using Manea can come in here, click on weekly winners or best of the month, and then see basically very similar or essentially the same ads, right? But when we go into custom filters and do this on our own and, you know, essentially set up our own filters, we're eliminating all of that competition from seeing the same ads because we're essentially setting up our own filters. And it's very unlikely that two people essentially set up the exact same filter. So I'm gonna show you some filters here, what I like to do, some best practices, and how you could use this to your advantage. So the first filter I usually like to do is the dates, okay? And I usually like to go with the creation date, okay? Because I wanna see ads that were you know, created over the last maybe like 30 to 60 days, okay? And the reason for that is because I want to see new ads that have been recently created that have been you know, doing well, okay? And this just helps us find more recent 
you know, winning products. So that's the first one that I'll usually set. So over here, you'll see that I set it from January 1st of this year up to today, which is February 23rd when I'm actually recording this video. So that's usually the first filter that I like to choose. The second one is the media type, right? So we can choose to only see video ads or image ads, okay? Now I'll usually like to choose video, but I also use image a lot because this is, you know, images are actually very underrated. And because everyone only looks at videos, there's a lot of image ads and, you know, products that only have images that also do very well. But for right now, I'm just gonna stick with video. Now the call to action over here, we can choose the call to action that we want to see ads with, right? So we usually just want to see buy now and shop now because this is just gonna show us products that people can actually buy right now. And it's most likely going to only show us, you know, physical products that we can actually sell. Now for e-commerce platform, we can also choose like where these, you know, which platform these products are actually being sold on. So I usually like to choose Shopify. And then we can also select the language that, you know, we want to see ads in. I personally only want to see ads in English, so we can click on English. But this is a very powerful filter, especially if you live in a country that doesn't speak English, like Spanish or French, German or Brazil, you know, whatever the case is, because then you could take those ads and look at those ads and you can understand them because you speak these languages and then potentially bring those products to the US or to the English speaking market, or you can just sell them in those specific countries as well. So this is a really, really powerful filter and a very underrated filter as well. And now the next thing we can do is actually filter by engagement as well. So usually what I like to do is I usually like to filter by engagement because I want to see ads that are getting some traction that people are actually interested in, that people are actually engaging with, right? We don't want to look at ads that are just duds, dead, no one really cares about, no one's clicking on, no one, you know, no one even really cares about. And now the one engagement filter that I really like to focus on is shares because usually people will only share something if they're really interested in it, okay? And if a product or an ad has a lot of shares, then you can, you know, basically bet that it's a potential winning product. So I'll usually like to choose medium engagement or you can even set an amount. So you could be like, I want a minimum of 100 shares and a maximum of like 500 shares, okay? Just so that, you know, you're not looking at products that have nothing and you're not looking at products that, you know, have thousands and thousands of shares that, you know, potentially have a lot of competition and, you know, you're gonna be competing against big brands, okay? But what I usually like to do is I'll usually just choose medium engagement. And now essentially what we can do is just use these filters and start scrolling. And if we can't find anything after five, 10, 15, 20 minutes, then we can start Start, you know, playing with more filters, maybe playing with the likes or the comments or targeting audience or countries, you know. But what I usually like to do is start with a more broad filters and then I'll usually start niching down if I'm having a hard time finding products, okay? So now here's this ad over here with a puppy and usually pet products do really well and they grab a lot of attention. So if, you know, and what's cool is you can just hover over it and see, um, you know, the ad to see kind of what the product is. Again, this is very similar to the baby product we were looking at earlier, except this is, you know, a dog instead and you give them a pup warmer or a calming otter, I guess. You know, essentially the same thing. You give them a teddy bear and then they just end up relaxing. Yeah, there you go. So it's essentially the same thing, but for pets. So now again, all you need to do is just ask yourself, you know, when someone sees this product, are they going to feel something? Is it going to invoke emotion, you know, in someone that watches this video? And absolutely they are, especially if you're targeting pet owners or people that have a dog because they're gonna see this and they're gonna be like, oh my God, cute puppy, okay? And then they're gonna see, you know, that it's a rescue puppy. They're gonna see it looking sad and that it's, you know, it's struggling with anxiety. And then they're gonna see that this product is helping them with that, you know, and basically mimics a heartbeat and they're gonna see now how you know the pet loves to cuddle with you know the teddy bear and and you know again see it's just invoking emotion you know you don't really need to hard sell this product the product is selling itself because it's solving you know the pain that a customer might have with their own pet or with their own dog so these are the best type of products because not only do they invoke emotion and they get people really feeling something they also solve a problem at the exact same time okay so this is super super cool and now again if you look over here on the information, um, we'll see that this ad's only been running for 18 days. It's, it's, it's literally brand new. It's, you know, it was created, you know, 18 days ago. It already has 22,000 likes, 257 comments, 423 shares. So this is an excellent product to potentially go after. And now we can see over here, ever since this thing started or this ad started running 18 days ago, the engagement has been absolutely skyrocketing and exploding, which is, you know, really good news for us. And then down here, again, we can see the audience that they're targeting, the, you know, the gender, the audience age. So this is super, super cool. So now as good of a product as this is, you have to go back and remember criteria number four that we spoke about earlier on in the video, which is can you easily create content for this product, right? Because if you don't have a dog or if you don't know anyone with a dog, you know, this is a great product, but if, you know, if like, if you just can't find anyone who has a dog to film a video for you for ads, you're gonna, you know, have a very hard time 
going with this type of product. And so now let's say that you actually want to save this product and this is a product that you actually want to test. Instead of taking this and adding it to a Google Sheet and you know getting all messy, what you could do is just click on save over here. And what you could do is you can actually create a list and save it to a list. So what I would do is I would just change this and call it pet niche products. And then we can add it to the pet niche. And then we can even add an emoji over here so I could add the dog emoji. And then we can add the color, change the color, and then we can create a list and add to list. And then if you click on my list over here, you'll be able to see all of your different lists for all of the different niches and then all of the products that you added within those niches so that you can later on test. And it just helps keep everything very, very organized. So now what we're looking at is great ads, right? Because of the way we actually set up the filters. And what I would recommend doing is just going through here and looking at these products and going through the four step checklist that I was talking about earlier and see if they fit that, right? See, see if that these ads or these products invoke emotions, solve a problem, are easy to understand, can quickly be understood within just a few seconds, okay? And then, you know, add them to your list and create custom lists for custom niches, okay? And just keep things nice and organized. But now what we can also do too is actually look at bad ads or ads that are not performing. And sometimes I like to do that just to see what I should not do. So what I would do is actually remove the shares filter here. I would essentially keep everything else. And then I would go back to the filters by engagement. I would go to shares and then for the minimum, I would put zero and for the maximum, I would put like 10. And now the reason why we would wanna do that is to see examples of bad products and bad ads and ads that are not getting engagement and that are, you know, and that are not getting shares. Now this doesn't mean that every ad here is a bad ad or a bad product, but if it's been running for a few weeks um, and it's not getting any engagement, then you can essentially you know, guarantee that it's just a bad ad. So sometimes you know the ads are actually not that terrible or you know the product actually solves the problem, but ultimately the people just don't want it, right? So that's another big factor that you have to think about that even if you create a good product Product, or sorry, a good ad and a product solves a problem. If people don't want it and people can't connect to it and it's not niche enough, then people just won't buy it, right? That's why I really like going into niches and the more niche, the better, because like I said earlier, this is where you can directly speak to your consumer. So if we look at this product over here, you know, this is a very broad product that basically anyone can use, right? I guess it's something to clean your boots or wear over your boots or whatever. This is a good product. I mean, it solves a problem, but you know, who's really going to buy this? Like, you know, it's, it's, it's just hard to target and speak to a specific demographic and someone who would, you know, feel like, man, I really need to buy this right now. You know, this isn't the type of product that you would do that. This is the type of product that you would think about, you need or you want, and you would probably just go to Amazon or go to your local store and actually just buy it. All right, so now the last thing I actually wanted to share with you guys is the success radar tab. So if you're on a paid plan with Menea, you'll essentially get access to this feature. And as you can see here, only 195 people have access to this list, which is you know, really good to know that not the entire world has access and can see this list. And this is really, really powerful because number one, this list gets updated every eight hours. So you'll see over here that um, there's gonna be fresh product picks in about four hours and seven minutes. This will automatically reset. And so now what the AI does is it essentially goes out there, looks at products, you know, looks at the ads, um, essentially looks to see where the ads are being run, like whether they're being run on Facebook, TikTok, interest, um, the demand, the search volume, competition, all of that put together. And then what it'll do is it will come up with a Menea score. And now the scores are usually between zero and 100. A lower score, so like a 10 or a 20 or a 30, usually indicates that there isn't you know, that much demand for the product, um, there isn't that many ads running for it, um, there isn't that many sales. Um, it could be still worth it for you to test. It could just mean that you know, people aren't running good enough ads or that maybe the product just hasn't taken off yet. Um, and now a score of like 90 or 100, that usually means that the product's already been saturated um, and there's a lot of competition for the product and essentially the product's already everywhere and there's a ton of ads for the product already. So ideally, we would want to be looking for a Menea score between like 75 to 80 or like 70 to 85, you know, somewhere in that ball range. So we can, you know, essentially just try to find that sweet spot between like trending products, but still not saturated and where we still have room to actually come in and compete as well. So if we scroll down here, we'll see some products over here, 88, 86. So these are the type of products 
that we actually want to go after. And we can see actually where they're being ran, like on which network, so on Pinterest or on Facebook. And now over here, like if you know, the network actually has a flame on it, like over here, the Facebook has a flame. Um, this means that at least one promotion on Facebook has a very good engagement score and that we should actually go and check it out. But this is a 90, so this usually means that, you know, the product, you know, might be a little bit too saturated at this point. This one's an 86, an 86. So these are great potential products. You know, we have an 84 over here, so this is great, an 84. So again, these are the products that are trending, but are not fully saturated yet, and we might still have a chance to get in and take advantage of. So again, what I would recommend doing is just clicking on save, adding to your list, or creating a new list for a specific niche, and then, you know, just help keep things um, very organized. All right, so these are just some of the features of Menea, but as you can see, it's extremely powerful, and there's still a ton more features, but if I was to go through every feature, um, you know, this video would basically um, never end. But I tried to show the most powerful features and the features that I think would be the best suited and would actually help you find winning products and save you a lot of time. So if you're interested in checking out Manea, you can use the link in the description below to get 20% off a month for your first three months. So by now, I hope you have the knowledge and the confidence to go out and start doing your own product research. Um, I really hope you found this video helpful and learned a few things. And if you did, I would really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Um, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I'll see you all in the next one.